Okay guys, so there's a little bit of a breeze outside, so I'm just doing this inside the car. Saturday we come and painted the gear. Yesterday, which is Sunday obviously, I come and pick up the box because he didn't have the room in the uh, booth to keep it there and he needed to get a car in. The box is all done, I took that home yesterday. All we've got inside is the side gates and the wheel arches because the wheel arches just where it was sitting on the stand um, there's like a little square that just needs to be painted so we'll paint that today and then the sides need the outside the side that you see um, painted and then also the tray so we're going to be taking off the tray right now and getting it in the booth got to do a tiny little bit of sanding and then clean it up and then we just do the same process we done. So we put a primer down, then we put the paint down, and we'll be all good. As I said the other day, we ran out of that four liter kit doing what we already had. Lucky enough, the local supplier had one in, so I went and got one of them today. And yeah, we're pretty much ready to go with the next step. You guys have seen me put on and take off this tray a million times, so I'm just gonna take it off quick, and we're gonna put on some stands and stuff and give it a bit of a sand so we're not here till midnight but I've just finished work. So it's getting later in the day and we want to get this stuff done ASAP. Let's get into it and um, we'll show you when we're starting to paint. A few moments later. Okay, so we're all sanded up. We're all prepped, sort of. We've got to just wipe it over with that um, grease remover stuff that he used yesterday. But we're pretty much ready to go. We've got the tray on the stands. We've got our sides that haven't been painted on the stands. And then we've got the uh, wheel arches over the back there. What I was saying before is because I was sitting on these stands, there's just a pad where it wasn't painted. So we just gotta put the epoxy primer over that again and then do the Raptor coat on that. With the rear bar, what we're actually gonna be doing is, so if you can see, you sort of see a line just here. That's where the bar actually slips down to. So what we've got is I put the, the bolt, it's basically like a lock bolt that actually holds the uh, rear bar in. I've got it wound in when we had the bar out. So then we've dropped the bar in now and it's just sitting on top. So the plan is we're just gonna paint to that line pretty much so that when you do actually drop it into the slots completely and screw it up, it'll look like the whole bar is painted black when actually like a little bit of the bottom is still silver. All right guys, so the, the surface has been completely wiped over and cleaned off and now as you would have just seen, he's currently in there uh, putting the epoxy primer down by Raptor. So that's going down all right. I think he's having a bit of fun with, uh, the, with the drips and stuff of the round bars. So when he sprays it, it just sort of likes to pull at the bottom. So as you would have probably seen, he's been wiping it a little bit with his hand just because it keeps dripping down. Now, if you were doing a proper, uh, just like a two pack paint job, like a smooth, glossy color on your car, you probably wouldn't be going wiping it with your hands. But because the Raptor liner is so coarse, um, what you can actually do is just wipe the primer down like that and, and leave it basically and just spray over the top and you won't even know it's there. So it's pretty good in that instance so you don't have to sand it, make it uh, beautifully smooth before you put down the Raptor. We're going to have, still have a fair bit of the epoxy primer left over I and mean, I'll just take that home and we can use that on some other jobs that we're going to do down the track, maybe some under toolboxes or something like that. But I have a feeling we we'll, might end up using the whole 4 liter kit of Raptor again. Fingers crossed we don't because I would like an extra bottle just to do any touch-ups if we need or we may have missed some things or something like that, you know, just in case. We'll soon see how we go. So my uncle's currently in there now laying down the Raptor coat. It's going down pretty well. It, uh, it still chews up a lot of paint because, because of just the bar work and there's just so much waste when you're trying to paint it. So we're trying to make it uh, last as much as we can and do the important parts. And then basically the less important parts like under the tray that I don't really care about or under the box for instance, which isn't gonna be seen because the box is gonna be bolted on forever. So those sort of areas, I've told him just basically just leave it for now. Let's do the main points that we actually see and then whatever we have left, we'll, we'll just spray over the top. But it's starting to go through. We're onto the third bottle now and um, we're about three quarters of the way through the tray. So we've done the sides. I mean, the wheel arches, uh, three quarters of the tray and gates haven't been done yet. So that's what we're gonna do now. He's just finishing off that rear bar because he started it. Then he's gonna do the gates and then come back and uh, use the rest up on the tray pretty much. So hopefully, fingers crossed, it makes it because I do not want to buy another box at the moment. <laughs> Day two. Well, I am not really sure if you can see this, but 
it's a pretty miserable day. Um, <laughs> it's raining. So this afternoon, it's about seven o'clock at night. I've finished work and I've come down here to pick up the tray. And luckily, my uncle actually whacked it on, um, and then he's just put it outside because he needed his booth. So. It's a little bit wet at the moment, but that's fine because this stuff has completely cured and it looks amazing. So the tray is completely uh, sprayed up. It's all finished with the paint wise. I'm just trying to bolt it on now. So I've been here for 10 or 15 so far, just getting the bolts through and the spacers. So you guys already saw how we put it all on with the spacers and everything. And we're just replicating that again. The rubbers I put in didn't work out so well. They were meant to be a high tensile rubber, but basically it was a bit like gym flooring. And when I really tightened it up, it just sort of crushed and then just fell apart. So what I'm doing is just putting some I don't know if you call it ute matting, but it's like a uh, conveyor belt matting pretty much. So it's really, really thin, but I'm just putting a little bit of that underneath and then using another one of those plastic shims just to get our height again. But that should still be solid. Those, those plastic shims can uh, rate it to 20 tons and the ute matting is super thin that I'm just gonna crush it anyway, but it's just there as a bit of, I'm hoping a little bit of any vibration, but it, in the long run, it probably won't do that much. So what I'm doing now is just bolting it all up. I'm gonna chuck the wheel arches on soon, and uh, I've just pretty much gotta measure it all up and make sure I've centered it. This is a bit of a boring part, and I'm just gonna quickly get into it so that we're not here too late, and, um, and then I can't wait to show you guys the big reveal, but I'm going to do that once I have everything buttoned up. So we've still got to figure out with the canopy locks. Um, I've still got to pot rivet them on and bolt it down, I think. Screw the wheel arches on and then the tailgate things just slide on and then they're done. And put the locks back on them, actually. That's what I need to do. So I'm going to have some fun putting all this on so we're not here too late. And another night has passed. We have got the tray completely on. It's all buttoned up. It's uh, all straight and ready to go. So last night I was meant to put those uh, the new wheel arches on and stuff. I ended up not doing it because I forgot to bring the new tech screws and stuff. Put the old ones back on, but the objective today is to get those wheel arches on and then we've got the canopy over there. I'm going to be putting the T-locks on and also a bit of angle just to just to stop where it was used to rub with the old brackets. So I'll show you guys that when I get to it. But first things first, I want to get these wheel arches on because I really want to see how they look on here. Now I'm not going to show you them uh, before I put them on I guess. I really want to keep these a surprise because they look just they look top-notch and I'm super happy with how they turned out something else yesterday I said was that uh, it had completely cured no it had not completely cured it had completely dried but uh, the curing the curing curing cu curing curing process but that takes a total of seven days so basically what you have to do is just not be rough with it for seven days but you're good to get it wet you're good to touch it all this sort of stuff just don't be putting anything heavy down on the actual raptor coat so i'm just going to be super careful with it for the next week or so um, make sure i don't put anything heavy down on it but what i am going to be putting down is the box because that is something that's not going to move it's going to go straight on bolted on and never going to move again um, i really want to get that on because i have about two days before i go away well, sort of a day and today. Now, as you can see here, you can probably see a gray square. So that is still the primer, whereas this is now the paint. There's a reason for that that I'll get into a bit later. Right now, I'm gonna focus on getting these wheel arches on so then I can focus on the box so then I can start packing to go camping and it's just an endless cycle. 20 minutes later. All right, I'm kind of gonna go against my word here, but this is what the guard looks like. Now, I really want to show you guys how I mounted it, just so you know how to mount these sort of things in future. Um, this is how I pretty much went about it. So you can see these two bars here and here. That's just a 25 by 25 channel, basically. Because this lip right on the edge here sits out about 26 or so, 27 mil from these um, cross runners, um, I needed to space it out so that the complete one piece wheel arch would actually fit on snug and wouldn't be um, sucked up past this, this lip on the edge. So what I done was I went and got a 25 by 25 channel like this. Um, it's got a larger hole in there so that I can get a tech screw up 
and basically the tech screw just goes up into these little uh, L rails or whatever you call them and then I also done like a super strong sicker flex like adhesive and put that on all the rails where I screwed through so these things are solid as they're not going anywhere and I wanted to make sure those things won't move because if I ever you know hit the wheel arch and it rips off I wanted to rip off of these not rip this off the tray and damage the tray so now that you know those rails all I done was I marked up and pre-drilled some holes when I first mounted it up so now all I'm doing is putting some tech screws up into my pre-drill hole so there's there's holes all the way along I'm only going to put the edges in um, because if, if it ever rattles and comes loose then I've got some other ones that aren't worn out and I can drill it into them plus that's solid as and it's um it's only got eight screws into it so this is how I mounted it up and also on top of my archway because it wasn't completely uh, I guess fitting properly to fit up here uh, all I done was run a rubber strip through so it lines up with them almost <laughs> but it, it just spaced it out that tiny bit more which is maybe uh, maybe four mil or so maybe three mil and it gives me a gives me a tiny gap along the edge of the uh, guard to the tray all right guys so the wheel arches are now on the tray so that looks sick and it's time to start working on the canopy so we're going to be putting our locks on these are the locks I have picked up. I bought them on eBay, I think, for about 20 bucks a lock. Um, I believe they're all key to like with their little, little keys you get. It comes with a rubber seal as well as the lock. And then all we're gonna do is basically put them in where they used to be. Now the holes for the old ones are in the corners. They're there in that corner and that one. Um, whereas the new locks, it's more in the it's more here and here and then there and there. So I'm gonna have to redrill the holes, which is okay. All I'm gonna do is put some tape around the edge, hold my lock up, mark it, drill it out, and then pot rivet in. So the pot rivets I've got, um, <laughs> yeah, I had to paint them. So basically I wanted them to be black. I don't want them to be like a silver or a chrome aluminium finish sort of thing. I could have gone to a like a roofing shop or something and got some that were already painted black but Bunnings didn't have them and I was on a bit of a time crunch and, and the shop, the roofing shops are always closed but when, by the time I finish work. So this is the next best thing. Hopefully they'll last. I done like an etch primer and then painted them, um, but we'll see how they go. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna start um, doing these because I want this thing to be locked up and then I've also got to put a bit of a plate inside which I'll show you in a sec. Well, okay, today's not really working out the greatest. I've just tried putting it on. I've actually tried putting it on twice. Just the first one. I wanted to just make sure I could do it before I uh, set up the camera. So I had to play with it. Basically, what I'm trying to do is I put a bit of sicker flex uh, just around the edge, and then I put the rubber bit on, and then I try to pot rivet the handle on. Now, the ones that I painted, um, well, they should have been long enough. They were about six mil I think was the stem on them a six six point five mil maybe and I only really need to go through about five mil so it's baffling me but I'm pushing it as in as hard as I can and I'm and squeezing the trigger and, and it pops in it basically it's just putting a pot rivet into the handle of like the lock so what I'm doing is actually Sadly painting up another set. Now we're going for longer ones. These are, these are much longer. Um, so we're currently painting them up at the moment. Hopefully, I really highly doubt it, but I'm trying with the heat gun and everything and just trying to dry it as fast as I possibly can. So maybe I might give it a go to do it like as soon as it's dry. Otherwise, I'm gonna have to wait till tomorrow, which is really gonna stuff up my schedule and I slightly scratched the box because it slipped and oh, it's just so angry. I'll give you guys a bit of an update when I uh, figure out what exactly is going on. Alright guys, so it's about 8 o'clock and as you can see it's dark. Lucky I got a, uh, a spotty set up. I've finished the locks now, all four are done, but I need to put a little, basically an L channel um, along the back because, I'll show you this. The locks all work good. They're a bit stiff because they're brand new, but, oh, it's not even unlocked. They're a bit stiff because they're brand new, 
but they will eventually loosen up and stuff. Um, they're much better than the ones I had. All key to like too, so that's good. I was happy about that. I wasn't sure if they were going to be key to like because, you know, just eBay ones. What I have to do inside here is where the old locks used to sit, you can see that point here. So basically that's just a divot in the aluminium, um, just, from, just from wear and tear of the lock constantly doing this and uh, it's just worn it right out. So what I'm going to be doing is I've got some like L shape here and all I'm going to do is basically stick that on there and that should stop it from um, where, it, well that should stop it from being really loose and, and vibrating the doors all the time. So it'll be a flat piece that it can stick along. So basically I'm not going to worry, I was going to pot rivet it and stuff, but I think what I'm going to do is just use that Sikaflex stuff because it is super strong and that should hold it on there nicely. Okay, well guys, it's about 9 o'clock at night and I'm going to start packing up. What I've done is gone around and put all our angle pieces on, so we've got one there and we've just got it at each lock. Which you can't really see those ones. These struts are now completely up, so they're all tight and stuff. And I found that the the left side on that side over there actually is not working properly. So lucky I'm going to be replacing them soon. I put the strips on the weather strips as much as I can. I've just left the bottom off, obviously, to let that all dry. And um, these are dried enough now that I can get rid of the clamps. So that hopefully it won't um, rain because obviously you guys know it's been uh, some bad weather here lately. But um, hopefully it won't rain so it can completely dry and it'll be sweet. So tomorrow the plan is to, now that this is done, is basically to put it on the car and bolt it up. Because I actually have to pack tomorrow as well so that I can go away on Friday. So it's a bit of a rush and it's a bit last minute but um, we'll get this on tomorrow and bolt it up and that's all I have to do. Because I spent the time now and it's and stayed out a bit later tonight, um, basically everything's done. The the car is completely finished, I believe. No, it's not. That's a lie. The car's not actually finished. I want to put an LED strip along the back where the it shines down for the number plate. So get rid of the old lights that they have. Just cut that and terminate it onto a light strip, which I've got a couple of like LED waterproof um, lights. So I'll basically stick them up under there and and then it will light up all the number plate and stuff and it'll look sweet so that's all i've got to do to the car now and then the box is completely done so we are ready to bolt it straight up tomorrow we'll have it on ready to go and then i've just got to load it up and pack it all and um and we're done basically so pretty stoked on that so anyway guys i will see you tomorrow well guys fast forward about three months to uh, this current time right now um, where I'm filming the outro because I forgot to do it on that week. Basically, the last video parts you would have seen is, is me putting together the canopy, getting it ready to put on the car and etc like that. That was a Wednesday night. The Thursday night it started bucketing down rain. Uh, so me and a mate standing in the rain getting the, getting the canopy put on, bolted on, packed for camping, all that sort of stuff. So... I didn't pull out the camera just because, well, one, it was raining, and two, I didn't really have the time to be standing around with the camera because I needed to pack really quick. So Thursday night, I was ready to go. Friday, we had a bit of a half day, so all of us took our stuff to work and drove straight from there. We went up to Bulladila, so there's a, I can't remember what the national park was up there, or state forest, I think it was state forest. Might have just been Bullard Deal State Forest, I don't know. But we went up there, um, four-wheel drive action, and when they were called four-wheel drive action, had been there, and we stayed at the same campsite they did, and we were trying to find the tracks that they did, but we ended up just finding some, um, some pretty hectic winching tracks. Now, for three out of the four of us that don't have winches, yeah, we were heavily working that one guy that had a winch to pull all us up tracks and stuff like that, so... I think we'll be going back there once we all have our own winch setups. I think it was a pretty cool track and I think you might, you guys might like to see it. So you might be wondering why I'm not showing you the car at all or why I'm not showing you the rear tray with the Raptor coat and all that stuff on for this outro. Well, basically the car is three months down the track after being sprayed. So I will be filming a proper review video in a couple of weeks or so. I was going to do it today but didn't have the time. Sun's starting to go down and I want to put a little bit of effort into it, make it look really schmick. A little bit of a preview is I really like the Raptor coat. I think it's awesome. Um, I'll definitely be doing it again on my bull bar and side steps and stuff whenever I get them. But for now, the tray is handling pretty well, but I'm not going to give too much away 
as I want to film that second video. If you guys want to see things a lot sooner than you do see it on these YouTube videos, um, definitely go and check out my Instagram. So I'll put it just here for you. I tend to post more things on there and I've started posting things a lot more, um, getting into doing a bit of stories and, and showing you guys a bit of previews before they even come to the YouTube world. Another thing is we have these jumpers made, custom 4x4. So if you guys don't already know, we have an Instagram page as well for our little group um, called Custom 4x4. Now my mate runs that Instagram account and he does all the jumpers and things like that. Um, so it's not me personally, I have enough things to do. So if you guys are interested at all in getting these jumpers, go follow Custom 4x4 and send him a DM. He's sort of, I think he's thinking about starting to make them and, and be able to sell them to you guys, um, as well as stickers and things like that. But I think he just wants a little bit more of a demand before he goes and, and invests his time, money and stuff into doing that. So if you guys are interested in getting any custom 4x4 gear, so this is a jumper we have. Just our little group has it at the moment, but it's basically got custom 4x4 on the front and on the back. I've gone and got gold um, because I couldn't find bronze. I would have much rather to have bronze, but it was a bit of a hard colored get and we were trying to get it before um, I think the long weekend or so. So it was more of a just quickly get whatever color we can and see how we go. I'll put the custom 4x4 little Instagram link just here. So I'll try and get out next weekend or the weekend after or so and film a really nice review video of it. Um, I want to get some nice cinematic shots and just really put a lot of effort into it. Um, so we'll see how that goes and then that one will probably end up coming out like another month So there's a couple of videos. I want to get out before that I just need to sit down and edit them and then they will be out ASAP But anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video Make sure you leave a like and you subscribe to the channel to see some more content from the Colorado We want to start doing some nice four-wheel drive videos when we actually go out with the boys Sort of the 4x4 crew the custom 4x4 crew so We'll be heading out um, soon, I think in a few weeks we're going to go out camping and stuff again. Goal for us is to try and get some nice videos out for you guys to just see what we get up to on our camping and full driving trips. But for now, I hope you guys like this video. Make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Make sure you leave a comment if you've got any questions or anything about the Raptor Coat. I've been getting so many DMs through Instagram what I actually think about it. So that's why I really want to do this review video and make sure it's top notch. And I will be giving you guys my honest opinion. Yeah, you, you guys will know about it if I don't like it. But so far, so good. I really like it. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. See you guys.